donate, you don't know where Allah will take it to. You don't know how your donations tonight supporting IDC, you don't know if one person will walk through the IDC center and will end up setting up an organization of their own that will go on to support thousands of brothers and sisters. You have no idea. But I sat here tonight and I just thought, shame on you, Alia. Well, I, I felt embarrassed because I've known about IDC and I've known about the wonderful work that Abu Tayyib and his team are doing, but how have I been supporting? And I felt ashamed. You know, the beautiful thing about our deen is that when we give, you should intend big. Attach a magnificent intention with every donation that you give. Imagine that a revert will walk through the doors of IDC and go on to do great things. Have that intention. Have the intention that your standing order will go on to support thousands, if not millions. And I'm serious. Because the Prophet said, and this is the beauty of this is this is this is the generosity of Allah that when we intend something and we do it, we get the reward. If we intend something but we're unable to do it, what happens? Anyone? Anyone? You get the reward for it. So intent big. Now, whilst dawah, as in giving dawah, calling people to Islam is important, <laughs> it is important, I wouldn't be here as a Muslim um, if, it, you know, if, if I hadn't been given dawah, as, as many of us are here, you know, many of us reverts. What I've noticed over the last 23 years is that shahadas are sometimes treated as trophies. And this has to stop. A new Muslim is not a trophy. A new Muslim is not a number. A new Muslim is a person with a name, with a background, with a family, with history, with feelings, with emotions. And so when you give dawah and someone says, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, then you need to follow that up. You need to make sure that you are there for that person. If you say, brother, anything you want, come to me. Sister, here's my number. If you need anything, call me. You better follow it up. Because the shahada is the easy part. The shahada is actually the easy part. What comes thereafter is what is really, really difficult. Telling your family, breaking it to your friends, changing the way you dress, you know, learning new terminology in a foreign language, learning how to pray, transitioning from one lifestyle to another. Losing your job, losing your family, losing your home. The list could go on and on and on. I have countless stories that I could tell you of sisters that have come to solace broken after taking their shahada. So it's not, you know, the shahada is, is not a trophy. We need to realize that when someone becomes Muslim, they have a right upon us. They have a right upon us to feel supported, to feel cared for, to feel like they have a family that will assist them and journey with them as they go through the journey. I became Muslim in 1999. And perhaps there's an excuse why there was a lack of support. No social media, you know, I think brick phones were still around. So, you know, communication was limited. In 2022, in 2022, for Solis to still receive messages and calls from sisters crying, saying, I became Muslim and I cannot tell you how lonely I feel. I will give you an example very quickly. A blind sister, a blind sister who lives in Wales contacted us crying and she said, I've felt lonely my whole life due to my disability. I have felt lonely my whole life due to my disability. When I became Muslim, I thought that that loneliness 
will no longer be there. She said, now I experience a loneliness upon loneliness. Wallahi, it broke my heart. We understand that with the Shahada come many, many difficulties. After the Shahada, a brother or sister needs specialized support. Sometimes when we think about reverts, we imagine a white face in a hijab, right? Or a white brother. We have Asian reverts, black reverts. The ex-Hindu, ex-Sikh sisters in particular face the most severe trials I have ever heard of. One of the most severe cases that we've received at Solis was a, an ex-Sikh um, sister who had hidden her Islam from her family out of fear. Upon finding out, upon her brothers finding out that she had become Muslim, they beat her up, locked her up, and she managed to um, she managed to ask her cousin to smuggle in a phone, and then she called us for support. This is what some of our brothers and sisters face for Shahada. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. Whoever relieves the hardship of a believer in this world, Allah will relieve his hardship on the day of resurrection. Whoever helps ease one in difficulty, Allah will make it easy for him in this world and the hereafter. Whoever conceals the faults of a Muslim, Allah will conceal his faults in this world and the hereafter. Allah helps the servant as long as he helps his brother. Allah helps the servant as long as he helps his brother. And the hadith goes on, but I want to mention that bit one more time. Allah helps the servant as long as he helps his brother. This dunya is tough. This dunya is full of trials. All of us have either been tested, are being tested, or will be tested. If you want ease, if you want solutions, come to the aid of your brother and sister. And there is no better way of doing that by donating to an organization, mashallah, tabarakallah, who are trustworthy, who are doing fantastic work. Donate to them and see, see with your own eyes how Allah as well as rushes to you, uh, aiding you with your own difficulty with them. Jazakumullah khair, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.